Hi guys, it's Juliet here and you're joining me today at Spoilt Rotten Beads where I am going to show you how to make an easy peasy two drop POT bracelet using size 8 Delica beads and size 11 Miyuki Delica beads mixing the two together to create this beautiful checkerboard effect. I've got two colorways, this nice peacock that I've got in my hands here and also this beautiful peach as well. Now um, we've got the size 8 Miyuki Delica beads in around 35 different colors, I think. Um, there's a free pattern for this bracelet that you can download from our website, www.spoiltrottenbeads.co.uk. And everything that I am using today, you can buy online on our website. And if you're watching this from outside of the United Kingdom, don't worry because we will ship to you all over the world. Okay, let's get making. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make one of these lovely two drop peyote bracelets here using our new size 8 Delica beads and also using just regular size 11 Delica beads. And you can see that you get this beautiful kind of checkerboard effect which really sparkles because um, in this particular bracelet here I've used um, a crystal AB uh, Delica in the size 11s and that's what's giving it the sparkle. But this one's going to be really sparkly too because I'm using this silver plated um, Delica here um, in the size 11 to accent my three different colors of size 8 Delicas. So to do this I'm going to be using size 8 Delicas and I've chosen three different colors that I'm going to be using today but it will work really well with just one color if you prefer. To make an average size bracelet of around about sort of seven to eight inches you're going to need around about six and a half grams of size 8 Delicas which is quite handy because these come in a 6.8 gram tube so one tube if you're just using one color will be enough to make yourself a bracelet. You're then going to need your size 11 Delica beads and in the bracelet that I'm about to show you I'm just using one color but in this lovely um, salmon -y color here I have used three different colors of size 11 Delicas that I've remixed together. You're going to need a slide bar clasp and this is a 26.5 millimeter slide bar clasp that I'm using today and then you're going to need some size 10 beading needles and some six pound fire line thread. Okay, so let's get started. Put all this to one side, get rid of my clasp because I don't need that at the moment. The first thing you need to do is to thread up your needle with the longest length of fire line that you're happy working with, which I have done here. I've got around about a meter. And I'm going to add a stopper bead onto the end of my thread. Just got a little crystal here that I'm going to add. It doesn't have to match your project because you're going to take it all off at the end. And the thread that bead on and then take it down towards the end of my thread leaving a tail of around about six seven inches so that I can pop a needle on that tail of thread and weave it away when I'm done and then you want to go back through that stopper bead from the opposite direction like so your thread will just loop around that bead and that stopper bead will just stop everything from falling off the end of your thread whilst you get your POT started. So we're going to be doing two drop POT today, which beads up really nice and quickly, which is brilliant. It's, it's really easy and quick to do. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is pick up one of your size 8 Delica beads followed by two size 11s, another size 8, two size 11s, another size 8. You want to keep going and we're going to be, we're going to be um, doing even count POT and I'm going to be counting each of these size 11 beads as one bead um, because it's a two drop POT. So that's one, two, three, four, five um, and six. And um, seven, eight. Let me take this down to my tail of thread and let you guys have a look at it so you can see what I've done there. There we go. 
So I've now effectively what I've got is eight beads because I'm counting each of these size 11 beads as one bead. So I would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight beads effectively. So I've got my eight beads here and I'm coming out of these two size 11s at the end here. And what I'm gonna do is pick up two more size 11 delicas and go through that size eight bead there. My work will look like that. I'm gonna continue along picking up two size 11 beads going through the next size eight bead. You might hear a little beep in a minute in the video. That's just our printer starting up. It always likes to beep and tell you that it's doing something. I think it's quite proud of itself. There we go. Uh, two more size 11 beads through that next size eight bead. And I get to the end of this row, I'll get my fingers out of the way and let you guys see what it all looks like. Two more size 11 beads and through that next size 8 bead. Okay, I'll pop my work down and let you guys take a look at that now. So it looks like that now. Um, so I'm coming out of this size 8 bead and I want to pick up now two more size 11s. Drop those down and I'm going to twizzle my work around so I can work more easily. Picked up those two size 11s, get him out of the way. And I am going to go through the next two size 11s that I get to, like so. Pick up two more size 11s and once again go through the next two size 11s that I get to. My work just got a little bit twisted there so I just twisted it back again. Two more size 11s and then through the next two size 11s. two more size 11s and through those end two size 11s. There we go, put all tight, let you guys have a look at that. There you go. So I'm now coming out of these size 11s here and I want my next bead on the top here to be a size eight. So as I said, I'm keeping this quite random. I'm now gonna pick up a size eight and go through the next two size 11s, and that's actually the two size 11s that I just added. And I can pick up another size eight. See how quickly this two drop peyote builds. If you've not done peyote before, this is a great place to start. Once you've got those first two rows that I've just done, those first few rows, um, everything is so much easier. And you can really see where to go next in the pattern. It's quite sort of obvious to the, to the eye where I need to go next. So I picked up another size eight and going through those size 11s there. Yeah, already you can see that nice checkerboard effect. I'm beginning to appear. So I'm coming out of these two size 11s. I'm gonna pick up two more size 11s and go through that eight that I just added. Pick up two more size 11s, go through the next eight in the pattern. Pick up two more size 11s, go through the next eight. Pick up two more size 11s and go through the next eight. There you go. And now I need to turn around and go back in the other way. Because I've got an eight here, I'm gonna need two size 11s to sit on top of it. So I picked up my two size 11s and I'm gonna go through the next two 11s in the pattern, which are the ones that I just added. Pick 
up two more size 11s and go through the next two size 11s. There we go. Pick up two more size 11s, go through the next two size 11s. Pick up two more size 11s and go through these end two size 11s. Pull everything tight. Let you guys take a look at that. So I'm coming out of these size 11s here and I've already got a little um, set of four size 11s here. So my next bead is going to be a size 8. So I'm going to pick up a size 8 and go through the size 11s that I just added in the row below. You can see what I'm doing now. I'm just going to continue beading in this way. <clears throat> I'm keeping my colour placement nice and random. I'm really not worrying too much about it. I want to give it that nice kind of patchwork quilt kind of effect, which I'll get just by keeping it, keeping it random and not really thinking too much about my colour placement. There we go. There we go. So again, I'm coming out of these 11s here. I'm going to pick up two more 11s and go through the eight that I just added. There we go. And that's all there is to it. It's really as simple as that. Um, so it's a kind of beading you can just have on your go on your bead mat and just keep coming back to it, adding another row. Um, you don't need to kind of worry about where you are because it's quite obvious to, to see where you need to go to next. Um, so it's a nice easy stitch, it beads up nice and quickly. There we go. Let me go through these 11s here. Let's pull it tight. There we are. Two more elevens. I'm making a meal out of this, trying to get through this eleven here. It's not that hard. I think my my eyes are just going funny because I've been beading all day, making that lovely salmon coloured one. There we go. Oh, I didn't want to go through the eight as well. There we are. There we go. It's really pretty and sparkly already. You can see it sparkling away there. So really, I'm just going to continue beading and. Uh, a little bit more until I've got a few inches of beadwork here and then I'm going to come back to you and I'm going to stop what I'm going to doing and I'm going to just show you how to attach that slide bar clasp to your work. We do show you how to do that in one of our other videos as well but I'm going to go over it in this video too um, so there's no need to go hunting around for that other video um, on our YouTube channel. So as I say I'm going to continue beading and come back to you when I've got a few inches of beadwork done and I I can then just stop what I'm doing and show you how to attach your clasp. Okay, so I've been beading for a little while and I've got about four inches or so of my bracelet and as you can see, it's turning out really sparkly just like the other one is. Um, but what I wanna do now is just stop beading for a moment and show you how to attach this lovely slide bar clasp. These are great clasps because they are magnetic. They slide apart. They've got a little magnet in the end there and you just slide them back together and they click together and they're nice and secure. But what you can do is what we're gonna to do today, which is to attach them to the end of your bracelet with a little strip of POT. It's a really neat way to finish a bracelet. So I've come back to the beginning again where my stopper bead is here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide my stopper bead off the end of my thread and I'm gonna add a needle onto that 
Oopsie. Sorry, my uh, camera was slipping there. I've just attached my needle to the end of my, my tail of my thread now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to weave that tail of thread away into my work and tie a couple of half hitch knots as I do that. So to tie a half hitch knot, I've come out between two beads. I'm going to hook under the thread that goes into the beadwork there pull through so I get a little loop and tie off my thread. I'm going to do that a couple more times in a couple more places so I'm nice and happy that that's nice and secure and then I'm going to attach some more thread in order to make that little strip of peyote and add that clasp on. There we go. So I'm going through a few more beads there. I think this will be my last knot here. Just want to go through that next delica bead there. These delicas slot together so perfectly that if you happen to come out in between two of them, it's hard to get in back back through. There we go. I'm back through now. This is going to be my last knot. So I'm happy that that's nice and secure. Pull that tight. <clears throat> now I'm going to use my scissors just to trim off that tail of thread. And I'm going to attach some more thread now. So I'm just going to cut myself off some more thread. If you can hear some beeping in the background there, that's our, our printer. It likes to beep at us when it's doing things. So there we go. So got myself some more thread here. And I am going to add my needle. Attach it in exactly the same way that I have finished off my thread. I'm going to attach my thread in the same way. But what I want to do is I want to, um, when I add my slide bar clasp, I'm just going to create a, a slightly narrower strip of POT. So I want to make sure that when I've attached my thread, I'm going to I'm going to be um, coming out. I'm going to come out here. Um, just at the end here, um, on this side here of this size 8 seed bead, I'm um, not seed bead, delica bead, so that I can just begin that strip of peyote. So I'm going to pick a spot along the edge of my beadwork here. Go underneath between two beads and tie a knot. There we go. That knot just neatly slots down between two beads. Tie another knot there in the same spot, pull it through tight, and then stitch through the next couple of beads in my work and do exactly the same thing again. Stitch between two beads so I get a loop, go through that loop, my needle and thread, pull my thread tight, tie another knot, go through the loop and finish off by exiting from that size eight delica there. It's got my thread caught around my scissors. There we go. So now my new thread is attached to my beadwork and I'm ready to start making that strip of peyote. So I'm gonna be working back in this direction and I'm only gonna be using my size 11 seed be um, delica beads now. So I picked up two 11s and I'm going to go through the next set of two 11s in the beadwork here, like so. There you go. Pick up two 11s, go through the next two 11s in the work. And again, this is a bit tricky because this is where I've got my not my first knot, but it goes through quite easily, as you can see. And pick up two more size 11s and go through these final little set of two size 11s there. And it will look like that. And I'm going to work back in the same way, but back in the other direction. So I picked up two 11s and I'm going through the two 11s that I just added. Pick up two 11s, go through the next two 11s pick up two 11s and go through the next two 11s and i'm going to work back in the opposite direction picking up two 11s go through the two that i've just added you can see what i'm doing here just going to continue until i have got about 10 or 11 rows of 
of POT. Um, that's going to be enough then to slot on that clasp. I'm just keeping on going. You can see how quickly it's building. There we go. So I'm just going to continue until I've got enough rows and then I'm going to show you how to attach your clasp. Okay, so I've continued beading until I have got 12 rows of my um, POT, my two drop POT here with just the size 11 beads and I'm now ready for my clasp. So to do that, I'm just going to thread through one of the loops on my clasp so that I can pull my beadwork through that loop like so. So I'm just going to let you guys take a look at that for a moment. So I've just, it's all silver, so it's a bit tricky to see, but I've just pulled my clasp, through the, my, my beadwork through that loop on the clasp. So I can now flip over my beadwork so that it meets up with the beginning of my strip of POT. And I'll take that up to the camera there and let you have a little look at that. So I'm, Effectively, what I'm doing is creating a little POT tube, and what I can do is zip up the two sides of that tube by zipping up the little strip of POT, joining the um, the end that I'm working on now to the end that I began with there. So I'm exiting from the top here. I'm going to try and do this so that you guys can see what I'm doing. And what I'm going to do now is just go through those first two beads in that first set there in the clasp loop. Let me try and get you guys to see that. So I'm zipping up this little strip of POT and then back through the two on the end of my work. Back through the two Oh, here we go, back through the two on the other side, on the beginning of my work. Back through the two on the end of my work. And through the two there, right at the beginning of my work. And finally, through the two on the end of my work. Pull it tight, and that zips up that tube of POT. And you can see there, it's created a really neat way to end my work. Really neat ending there. So what I can do now is just weave my ends of thread away um, into my work, knot them off like I did earlier, and then I'm going to continue beading the rest of my bracelet here um, and finish it off. So um, you'll be able to download the pattern from our website and all the products you've seen in today's video are available from our website www.spoiltrottenbeads.co.uk. Please do leave your comments below and let us know what you think and share your beading creations with us on, your, on our Facebook page which is facebook.com forward slash making jewellery and check back soon for more inspiration thank you for watching guys bye bye